All right, so, um, I thought this was going to be a short video, which it will be now, but I ended up doing way more to this than I thought I was going to. So, here we go. I've taken it down to essentially baseline. Auto adjust is on at this point, and um, it's been cropped. I'll show you the crop. So, heavily cropped. I was very close to the bird in the first place, about 20 feet away, with the 600 millimeter f4 and i don't mind showing this but it's not that interesting and i think we got a much more commanding and i don't know just dramatic shot by taking it down to a straight profile so what i started out with as usual is the radio filter or mask whatever people want to call it um and for that one, it was significant. Um, you know, not a total insanity, but you know. Then we played with the eye some, okay, because there's a heck of a reflection in there. It's fantastic. Um, bird feeders, trees, and as we'll see when I turn on brightness, there's my vegetable garden. And there is a, um, this is a shrub. This is me sitting here actually with my camera. Um, so it's a real connection point with the bird itself. You're not gonna see all that from way out there. When I say way out there with, you know, tongue in cheek. But um, when you zoom in like that, you definitely can, which is fun. And so we've already got this great contrast in the eye there. And then what I did was I went around and I just con you know, contoured and darkened some aspects of... No, that's definitely not the layer. There we go. This is where I've added the shadows. And in addition to that, I took the blacks down some and we upped the contrast. So that as you can tell, just adds an extra dimension to the feathers of the bird. Then the huge amount of time that it ended up being was the color layer, okay? And so that's your adjustment layer too. What I did was I selected the green, the tan, like the brownie tan here, this blue, this iridescent blue, which is around the eye as well, the pink, and finally, this specific one right in here, okay? And what I did with each one, you can see I darkened a bunch of them, okay? Where I didn't darken was this iridescent blue because I want that to stay powdery blue, but I did increase the saturation. So it's everything that I've done with this is really quite subtle. The brown, yeah, I mean, it's definitely there. The green, the green's the most obvious to me. It also has the highest, it has a point, you know, a 5.0 increase in saturation. And it has a negative 25 um, lightness adjustment. So, now I haven't changed the actual hues at all for any of them. Um, saturation on the pink, I mean, it's present, but it's, as always, subtle. And to me, my thought about color correction is it has to be subtle. If it's not, it's going to be obvious. This just looks like an exceptionally well-captured shot from a technical standpoint. I'm not saying artistically, I'm just saying it just looks like we've captured the full contrast, dynamic range, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't look like an HDR image to me, but it does look like, okay, here we go. This is the, that really pop to it, you know, that people like these days. I mean, you can make this a faded out, you know, analog, type photo really easily um, 
put our filters for that, that'll just literally just make it look like Kodak whatever from, you know, 1965. Um, but, and I like that sometimes, but when I'm sitting here looking at a bird like this, I want to see the colors to a high degree. I want to be in that present moment with that bird looking at me, looking at you, and the whole world reflected in their eye, okay? And so we're drawn in to this whole point, the whole focal point is this right here. And we're seeing ourselves reflected in the eye of a bird, okay? So we're looking at them, they're existing in our world, and in reality, there is a perspective shift and a flip that happens when you can see birds from a certain perspective. And it's the same with any animal, of course. Um, this just happens to be how I like to represent that and, and show that. So the darkening, the vignettes, the whatever, all of this stuff that I do is to draw you into that point always and to have things be as real as they can be. Now, People make arguments about, oh, you know, you have to have a straight eye camera, all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, okay, fine. That's good, but, I mean, we're not that far off from where it started. And quite frankly, the after is far closer to what it actually looked like. This is just kind of a flat raw file. And raws aren't, especially when they're switched back to linear and all that kind of stuff, they're not designed to be beautiful, perfect photographs. They're just not. They're supposed to capture the most amount of information possible. And raw converters like Capture One or Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever else people use are designed to allow you to enhance that data, bring it back out from the sensor, from the capture, so that you can take it to where it was in reality, if that's your goal, or where your vision was, which is another goal. I tend to merge those two things. I want to show the vision, the artistic quote unquote side of it, along with how it really looked and how it felt, if that makes sense. So in any case, there we go. That's that's how I've edited this photo. Um, I like it. I'm pleased with it. Uh, what I'll do from here is I'll run it through Topaz, the ISO. There's not much noise at all, but what it'll do is it'll sharpen up um, kind of the feather swoop here some and things like that. And it'll just add an extra little polish to it. And it's pretty good at converting it down to a JPEG from this still quite big file um because this was a crop of a 50 megapixel file and blah, blah 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 so the jpeg will still end up being you know 15 16 megabytes um instead of the tiff which would be 268 megabytes something like that so in any case well i hope that you enjoyed this one and um that I didn't go too long with this description. So in any case, uh, all right, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.